Welcome to my commander table. This is where Magic the Gathering is played. Well, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about the epidemic that is in the TCG industry as a result of Commander becoming the main format for Magic the Gathering and thus the industry's kind of leading uh, place for people to play card games. Um, uh, this is going to be a fun video. We're going to chat about it a lot. I would love to hear your comments in, in the comment section and, and the dialogue behind this because uh, I think this does affect just about everyone, whether you are a Magic player or a collector or a consumer or you play other card games. This has uh, incredible impacts on the entire industry as a whole, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section. I'm going to call this an epidemic uh, because it's good and it's clickbaity and it's uh, it's it's eye catching, and I think it's true. But it doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. And I want to get that out there first because. I think that there are some inherently good things that have come from this idea that Magic the Gathering's main format is Commander. I said uh, yesterday in a video or two days ago in a video that I believe the average player at a store, the average Magic the Gathering consumer um, has has never played a two player format of Magic the Gathering. We, we have a cycle in Magic the Gathering where you have like about a three to four year shift of player base where when you start playing Magic, you, you play for about three years and then you take a break or you leave uh, and then you come back and you play for about two or three years and you take a break and you leave. It's kind of the cycle that we've seen in the industry. Um, and because uh, 2019 was the year of Commander, uh, since then every single one of those cycles has been heavily focused on Commander, which means that the average player learns and, and experiences Magic the Gathering in a pot of four, uh, not a one-on-one -on -one format, and most of the time with their friends very casually. Um, and I believe that because of that, we actually have more Magic the Gathering players now than ever before. So it, it is, um, it's an interesting thing. It certainly is like an epidemic. It, it affects the entire industry and the entire thing. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I want to get into that a little bit. Um, and I think as a result of the success of Commander, Magic the Gathering has become more mainstream than it ever has been in the past. Uh, playing Magic the Gathering is socially acceptable. It, it, it is no longer this weird thing uh, that, that people do, and it hasn't been that for a long time, but it is this more socially acceptable thing now where it, it is reaching uh, more uh, people in the mainstream. It's funny, my wife, uh, she works in the hospital, and people find out that I have a YouTube channel, and it, they tell my wife, hey, I saw your husband's videos, I play Magic. It's funny uh, how they interact, the people she works with, and they know what Magic the Gathering is because they're, you know, their spouses play or whatever. It's just an interesting dichotomy to start seeing people in the mainstream actually know what Magic the Gathering is. Um, so I, I want you to decide, is this bad or not? Uh, but no matter what, it does impact your views on this entire economy of Magic the Gathering, on the way that you know, LGSs function, on the way that boxes sell, on the way that singles move, on the way that Wizards prints products. We just had Modern Horizons 3 come out or spoil out and it has Commander decks. It affects every impact or every instance of the economy of Magic the Gathering. So I want to start uh, with, with my assumptions. And you know, I, again, I, I'm, I'm cool if you want to argue these things. This is just what I've experienced uh, over the last couple of years of owning a store and that kind of thing. But the start here is that the average player, so more than 50% will be my, my statement here, uh, of Magic players have only played, you know, considerably played a, a good bit or really only play four player Magic the Gathering or Commander. That is the starting point that I wanna get here. And you can disagree with that, that's fine, but that's where I'm starting with on this video, is that the average player, 50% or more of Magic players only play Commander. That's that's kind of where I'm going for. And on top of that, I wanna add uh, that most players stick to their play group. And that's another huge factor for this thing. It's another, just it changes the economy, it changes the industry when the average player just sits at a table with three of their friends constantly and plays magic. That is a completely different economy and structure than being at an LGS and playing in competitive events against people who you might not know. It is It completely changes the way somebody spends money. We'll get into it. Um, 
uh, you know, on Monday nights we run Popper at my store and Popper has been really successful. I know we're talking about four player magic and Popper is a one-on-one -on -one format, uh, but we have like 15 players, I would say on average for Popper on Monday nights. Uh, but there is always two pods of Commander and it's the same eight people. Uh, they sit in one corner over here, they sit in one corner over there and they play Commander with their friends. And occasionally, you know, one person won't show up. So somebody else, you know, will hop in and it, it'll be whatever. But for the most part, they stick to their four and they're very friendly with everybody else in the store and they're awesome and people know them or whatever, but they have their play group and that is who they play with. That is what they do on Monday night. They get together, they play magic together in this little, this little mini uh, culture, this little mini community within our stores community. And that happens across the globe at home and at LGSs and at tables like this in people's basements. Um, but what happens is that that group of four people decides on products. Uh, they decide, hey, we're gonna buy the, the Modern Horizons 3 Commander decks or not. We're gonna play Fallout or not. And maybe one of them picks up a deck because they love Fallout and you know the other three just don't aren't interested in it. That happened with Doctor Who. But they decide as a whole whether or not in their little community, whether or not a product succeeds or fails. It doesn't really matter what the meta is, right? Like in the past, the meta decided if a product passed or failed. But here, it's just your little group. This little pod of people decides. There's a guy in the comment section every week. He comments about what his play group is doing. We're sitting out on this product. We're not sitting out on this product. The groups decide things at a, a local small level as opposed to this kind of, you know, international meta game that develops when you have one-on-one -on -one formats. That is a big, big deal. Um, the social element of Commander has made the, the, the relationships with the people you play far deeper, but the width of the play is, is way less wide. Does that mean it's way more narrow? So your impact of, uh, for a consumer is way smaller uh, because it's just the pod that they are playing with most of the time. This also affects, you know, going into how does this affect the whole system, right? Not just the economy and the purchasing, or whatever. It also affects the gameplay. It affects, you know, I would, I would venture to say that the average Magic the Gathering player is significantly worse of a player now, significantly worse of a player now than in 2017, the average Magic the Gathering player. The decision trees and the way that, um, that Commander allows you to uh, negotiate and get away with things and not play right and, and whatever has made the average Magic the Gathering player just not very um, good. I, it's, it's hard. I, I'm, I'm on the side. I'm a bad Magic player because I play Commander. I get away with things. I, I take things back that you can't do in a tournament setting. And that has a whole impact across the board uh, for when you do try, when Wizards tries to push Standard. Like Wizards is trying to come back from this a little bit right now, and they're trying to push standard, but the average player doesn't know the right rules for mulliganing. They don't know that, because in their pod of four people, they're just like, yeah, there's just like free mulligans, don't get a combo, you know, just play, you know, make sure you can play, whatever. And they sit down at a pre-release, or they sit down at a standard night, whatever, and they don't know the actual rules of the game because they're so inundated with Commander. I'm talking about people who've been playing Commander for, for years. Um, the social element of Commander has really changed the game. And because four player is the key um, to connection, this also then affects the card market. And I think Wizards knows this. And I'm just trying to give you guys, again, I don't know if this is good or this is bad. I'm just trying to give you guys how this affects you as a consumer and things to think about when you see the negativity of the changes from YouTube channels like me or other people. Because I think that the, the reason that we are seeing Wizards change the way they're doing things is because they see this already. They see that the industry has changed. If you think about, you know, four player magic being the key, um, specific cards, your connection to specific cards is lower. Uh, so you have one of a card in your deck rather than four of a card in your deck. And at a basic level, this just, you know, this is, it just means that when they reprint a card, it matters less because you don't have four of them. You have one of them. It, it matters less to you as a consumer uh, in terms of the value because you have three less cards. So your, your impact of them reprinting a card is significantly lower. I think Wizards knows this. And so even though I get frustrated at the reprinting everything, whatever, I think it affects the consumer differently now because the average consumer is just going to have a one of that card in your deck. Um, and, and then it, it, 
affects the consumer less and then you have a, a more significant uh, desire to pick up cards because you don't need four of them as well. So it actually affects the consumer less but then allows the consumer a better reason to pick up those cards as they lower in value so it drives the singles economy a little bit more actively. Um, and this, this is, all right, so we, we kind of, I wanted to go through like, how does this affect the, the, um, the average player and the, the feeling of play and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, now that I want to get into the economy a little bit because I think it makes the magic economy less volatile. Um, you had in the past when a card was banned from modern, it was this big, huge deal. I mean, cards were crashing from $25 to like, you know, two bucks, right? Like a card would crash all the way down. It would be completely worthless completely useless. It would wreck stores. You know, stores were always like, I'm not going to buy this card because it might get banned and I don't want the risk and whatever. There's a little bit of that now, but not really. Like when a card gets banned in modern, it drops for like three days and it just kind of bounces right back up because the, the commander economy picks up those cards. Um, reprints, again, we already talked about this a little bit, don't hurt because it's four versus one. It doesn't hurt the consumer as much. Uh, and I think the negative side of this, it, it affects the sealed product sales because if you only need one of a card, it's way easier to just go purchase that card on TCG Player or whatever, rather than open up a box and maybe you get two of those cards and now you feel like you've wasted your money because you only really need one and nobody trades anymore. So what do you do with that? It just means that you open less product and you move more into a singles economy. And again, Wizards knows this. They know this. So what do they do? Say it. Come on. Come on, you got it. They print commander decks. They know that they're selling less sealed product. So what do they do? They say, okay, we're gonna sell less boxes, but we need to keep our revenue up. We need to keep selling product. So we'll sell less sealed boxes and we'll make commander decks in every single set. And those will sell because the commander players will have no problem spending $55, $60 on a fallout deck uh, to have a full new deck to play with. They, they love that. They eat that crap up because they don't want to have to really work and, and you know, whatever. They, they eat that stuff up. They love it. They love it, man. The magic economy has completely changed as a result of this. Um, those are the two things I think. Now, I'm going to, before I, I'm going to get into what does this mean for the whole TCG economy, but I want to start off by saying this. <clears throat> This is both better and worse for Magic. I know, I know I'm taking Switzerland and whatever, but it's better for Magic because the game is growing at a wider rate. More people are playing Magic today than were playing Magic a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. I believe that wholeheartedly. I think the Magic uh, world is, is, in a, is in a healthier spot and that's good for stores, that's good for consumers, it's good for you to be able to have um, a commander pot to go. Where it's bad for though, is those of you who want to play competitive Magic. It is harder now, I think, than ever to get a standard event to fire. It's harder now than ever to have a modern community, the modern crowd around us anyway. They just hop from store to store. They, they're not really part of an LGS community. They just hop from big event to big event, you know, kind of whatever, because they can't curate that, that um, there's no growth in the local side of the community. Now, we have had some pretty good success doing Popper because we just printed, we just didn't print, sorry, we just bought uh, like 10 decks and we just have decks just sitting there for people to pick up and play. So it's really easy to hop into the formats. And, but you can't do that with modern because it's, you know, it'd be 10 grand to have 10 modern decks. Um, and, and we do draft and draft seems to be really good. And, and that seems to be a good way to teach people how to, you know, they've already done some deck building with commander and they can get into like the actual play. Um, but at the end of the day, it's harder for communities who love the one-on-one -on -one formats to flourish. And that's a negative. So is this like double-edged sword? But here we go. I want to get into how does this affect the other, the greater TCG market. I know this is a little bit of a, uh, we're all over the place. I just want to have a, a dialogue about it. It's been on my mind a lot. Um, as a store who does a lot of other TCGs, right? Like we do sorcery, we're doing the new Star Wars game. Uh, we do Lorcana every week. Uh, we have One Piece going strong. Like we have a lot of, we have Pokemon. I mean, we have a lot of, every day there's another card game and magic. That's kind of our thing. Uh, it opens up the door in a weird way. All these games have, have a really hard decision to make. Um, I'll use sorcery as an example, just because we got a big tournament coming up this weekend. We're going to have 48 people. We're going to be live streaming here on the channel. Cannot wait for you guys to see it. It's going to be awesome. I want to use sorcery as an example. They have a hard decision to make, and every game across the board has it. 
do you lean into the success of Commander? where you say, okay, the average TCG consumer is used to playing with four players, so I should, as a, as a game company, have a way to capture that feel, where I'm gonna make Sorcery a four-player game, and I'm gonna have a rule set, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out with, you know, we're gonna have a play mat come out here pretty soon, uh, Kitchen Table TCG four-player play mat, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna support that kind of play and encourage that kind of play. Or, do you, you know, because that's what the, the industry is saying works. Or do you say magic is leaving a giant hole in the one-on-one -on -one format? And I'm going to lean into that because there's a success point there where people want that and they're not getting it in their communities for Magic the Gathering. I think this is why Lorcan has had some success. I think this is why One Piece has had a lot of success because people who want that competitive one-on-one -on -one format have a harder time getting that going with Magic because everyone's focused on, con on Commander. So when a new card game pops up, it's really easy to get eight people, to get 10 people, to get 12 people to play a one-on-one -on -one format uh, because you know that's the hole that Magic has left. So I think the um, the economy of the TCG industry has now created this vacuum where it's hard for these um, these companies to make that decision. What do I focus on? And stores to focus on like how do you take a community that doesn't use is not used to playing one on one format? And now you have a new game. You got to basically teach people how to play one on one card games again. Uh, so anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. I, a lot of times I do these videos to throw out ideas and, and to hear your feedback. That's what I really love about this YouTube channel. I don't want this just to be a one-way street. Uh, these are my observations of being involved in the trenches of owning a card store and being there and seeing the way that people interact and people who played Magic 10 years ago who just don't care about Standard or anything anymore. They're just like, all I do is play Commander because I can drink beer with my friends and sit at my house. That's like a, a true reality for the industry and it really changes things. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. I hope you have yourself a fantastic day. If you want to join the Discord server, head on over to kitchentabletcg.com. Completely free to be in our Discord server and hang out and chat. We do have two tiers there if you want to support the channel. The Blue Wizard tier uh, gets you access uh, to some different uh, like price breaks on stuff that I'll, I'll often shoot out. Um, and then the Gold Wizard tier, uh, allow, is a, the highest tier, allows you to get access to anything that is readily available at Distro uh, from me at Distro Pricing plus credit card fees and shipping and that kind of stuff. So I hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.